Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So here's another deck profile for you guys today. This time it's on Illusion Chimera. Now, unlike my branded Chimera, this one's primarily focusing on just the Illusion and, and Chimera packages. Now, of course, uh, there's still some things that are familiar, but yet I decided to, you know, try something a little different with it now, especially because like, again, with one branded Fusion, like the branded engine just isn't as strong anymore, especially because like I'm only gonna be, I got a hard search or hard draw into the branded Fusion and that's just not enough. So I was trying to think of a way, like what can I do to, to branded well to illusion chimera now that uh i have to like basically change the entire strategy from from scrap well luckily for me i found a card that actually does help me with this and and that's what i wanted to get with you guys today so let's go and get started all right so the main deck is 40 cards starting off with of course three copies of nightmare apprentice uh one of your main starters you just pitch any card from your hand to special summon this card and it can search out any illusion monster that you want Next up, three copies of Mirror Sword Knight. This is probably like our primary one card starter. Um, you can tribute this card as cost, and it's quick effect, by the way. You can special summon any monster that lists Chimera Fusion in its text. And primarily, your main target is going to be the Big Wing Burfament. And also has a neat graveyard effect where, like, if you control a Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast uh, on the field, anytime your opponent activates a monster effect, you can just banish this card from your graveyard or your field, in fact, and just negate that effect. Now, of course, this only works while the monster effect is active on the field, so just bear that in mind. Next up, three copies of Cornfield Codal. Uh, it's just a means to search out the Sword Knight in case if I don't hard open with it, or even the Nightmare Apprentice. So as long as you see either one of these three cards, it's full combo. But yeah, Cornfield Codal, you just pitch this card, you can add any monster that lists Chimera Fusion in its text. And it also has a graveyard effect where if your opponent activates an effect that targets one of your cards, um, you can just banish this card um as cost and just negate that effect and destroy it and keep in mind you have to control a chimera the flying mythical beast to use this effect but i mean for this deck that's not particularly hard so yeah uh moving on three copies of gazelle if this card is normal or special summon you can either add a level five fiend monster or a uh, chimera fusion and if it's used as fusion material you can special you can add to your hand any uh illusion monster from your deck to your hand so that's pretty nice next up two copies of big wing burfman the card that i think is pretty broken uh, because if it's normal or special summon, you can add both a level 4 beast monster and a chimera fusion. So this searches out two cards at once, where, where Gazelle can only search out one. And if it's used as fusion material, you can special summon any uh, illusion monster from your graveyard. So it's pretty nice. Next up, one copy of the Dia Bells. I like it because it's a anti-spell fragrance on legs. And if you end of a card is set, uh, in response to that, you can pop any card on the field. So yeah, Dia Bells is pretty nuts. Next up, one copy of Master Tal. Usually send this off with the effect of uh, the Burfamit Fusion Monster, just so you can bring back your Dia Bells, or anything else you may need. So, uh, Master Tal definitely has its uh, uses. Alright, so, for my Hand Trap lineup, sticking with three copies of Ash, of course. And I'm starting to see more and more Didi Crow, um, like, plays in, in general. So, like, I think Didi Crow, like I said before in my Lair of Darkness video, I think this is going to be one of the best Hand Traps moving forward, because, like, Especially against like the Snake Eye or even the Fiendsmith matchup, uh, a lot of the cards are now one ofs, and you, you generally just want to hit the right card so that way it just crumbles the entire combo. Next up, three copies of Imperm. You know, pretty good card overall, so why not just play it? And then for my spells, I'm playing three copies of Chimera Fusion, of course. The card's pretty broken because it's not once per turn to perform the Fusion Summon, but to recycle itself, it is a hard once per turn, so just bear that in mind. So, but overall, like the fact that you can basically polymerization as many times as you want and it's a quick play spell so that's pretty nice so it just helps you dodge effects uh three copies of super poly because i like having board breakers a uh, new addition to my deck i'm playing three copies of fusion armament and the reason i'm playing this is because um uh, and because like it special summons any you reveal one fusion monster from your extra deck and then you can special summon one fusion material whose name is listed from either your extra deck or your graveyard and of course uh we do have a target in the extra deck just to make our illusion package live and that's one of the things you want to go with now because again with no branded fusion i have to find a way to basically play a little bit more defensively and fusion armament actually helps me in that um in that uh, endeavor so that's one i that's one of the key new tech cards i'm playing uh moving on playing three copies of forbidden droplet is just additional disruption and it can't come up from time to time if i'm going second so like if i need to get my place to go through and my opponent tries to respond to something i can then just like play the forbidden droplets and whatever i need and Basically, I'll keep my plays forward. Still sticking to two copies of Triple Tactics and, of course, the uh, one called by the Grave. All excellent cards, so, yeah, I definitely like them. All right, now for the extra deck. 
Still playing two copies of Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts, simply because I like the ability just to rip cards out of my opponent's hand, just so I can get some knowledge of what they're on. And if I'm able to just play around their combos this way, this helps a lot too. It also has a Monster Reborn effect, if uh, just for any Fiend, Beast, or Illusion monster. So yeah, uh, next up, one copy of Birthment, the Mythical King of Phantom Beasts. I was considering playing this at two, but I had to make room for another card for my Fusion Armament to work. But I mean, usually one is enough. It's just a foolish barrel for your Fiend, Beast, or Illusion monsters. And it can also bring back your banished uh, Fiend, Beast, or Illusion monsters just by banishing it from the graveyard. Um, playing the one copy of the original Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast. This is what I bring out off of uh, Fusion Armament because you can just reveal um, Chimera, the Illusion Beast here because it requires a Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast as material. And uh, so you can just special summon this card. Yeah, it'll have its effects negated, but that's not the part that's relevant. Again, the point that's relevant is the fact that it's a, it's the original Chimera. And because uh, Sword Knight and, and uh, Cornfield Code will require you to control a Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast is... Uh, to use their negations, that's why it's so relevant. So fusion armament is just to make it so like, yeah, like I can avoid cards like infinite imperm if they try to hit the uh, the burfament, uh, the main deck one at least to keep me from searching and so forth. Playing of course the one guardian chimera, still pretty good. One magnum the reliever, one aerial eater, a foolish barrel for your fiend monsters, and for my super poly targets got mud dragon, garura, and dragostapelia. Now, luckily, this deck doesn't actually uh, lock me into fusions like with Branded Fusion did, so now I can play some Link Monsters now. So I decided to go with IP Mascarena, SP Little Knight, One Cross Sheep, and of course the Underworld Goddess. So all excellent cards, so definitely something worth trying out, and yeah, that's about it. Alright, now for the side deck. The side deck's pretty self-explanatory. Decided to go with three Fenrir. And if it wasn't this, then I probably would have gone with Phantasme, so... But again, Fenrir is pretty good, and this is primarily to help me deal with the Ubel matchup. Three Drone Lockbird for, like, any deck that's on Fiendsmiths. Double Nib. And I've decided to try out the End of Anubis, just because, like, it cancels out Graveyard effects, which is pretty relevant right now, because, like, there's a lot of Graveyard-reliant-based effects, so I figured the End of Anubis is pretty nice. It also stops, like, targeting effects... Well, effects that target the Graveyard, so... Yeah, End of Anubis is pretty nice. All right, next up, two copies of Lightning Storm and Harpy's Feather Duster. I did find myself a charming copy, so I really like it. And finally, three copies of D-Barrier. I might switch this off of, for uh, evenly matched, but let me know in the comments of what you guys think. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you guys again next time.